Okay, Rabbi Isai, welcome to our Monday night shiur. We have the special privilege to host tonight uh, Sheva Brachot to a dear member, my Hashem bless her and her husband, Mabracha, Vatzlacha, Yishuot, Gedolot, Mechola Yishuot, to the sponsor of the Sheva Brachot, Bracha, Vatzlacha, Yishuot, Parnasar Rabba, V'Shef Ayab, and uh, to the sponsor of the Divrei Torah, Hashem should bless him, anonymous sponsor, Mabracha, Rifwa Shlema, to him and his Chalatza, Chalatza, V'Chen Yisem Benomai, Amen, Bereshut Harav, and Bereshut Kola Misubin, we're gonna in Leilu Nishma Avraham Ben Yafa, and uh, sorry guys, and uh, we're we're very close to the holiday of Shavuot. Shavuot is in three days, and uh, the the holiday these three days are the most important days of Sfirat They're the most important days. They're called Shlosha Yemei Hagbala, the three days of Hagbala. The Torah says, when Hashem came to Moshe Rabbeinu and he said, listen, I'm giving them a Torah. Torah is the instructions of how to live life. And to, for them to get that Torah, they have to be in a state of tahara, a state of purity. So they need to be, go to a mikveh. They need to go to the mikveh. From here comes the mitzvah before we read the Torah on Shavuot morning to go to the mikveh. The Ari didn't come up with this from his uh, own mind. Eliyahu Navi. I was okay, I just came from Eretz Israel to be in the room where Eliyahu Anavi taught the Ari Kadosh. It was a big zechut. If you go to the Ari Kadosh synagogue, his bima has six steps. Ari, the Ari says when, when the Chazan goes to Davin, he has to go up six steps. Those are the six firot of Yetzirah. It's a very big thing. I, it was always my dream to make a bima like this inside our Beit Knesset. Hopefully, in our own Beit Knesset, we can make a bima like this. It's, it's a it's a, it's a big zechut. But uh, the Ariya Kadosh didn't come up with this idea to make a uh, to go to the mikveh and Shavuot morning. He was taught this based on the pasuk in the Torah. The the uh, Rabbeinu, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu added <coughs> added by himself another two days, those three days of Hagah, and Hashem agreed with him. He agreed with him. They need three days to prepare themselves to be Tahor. When Rabbi Chaim Vita, the student of the Ari, when he was when he was in that year and a half, ten months, whatever it was that he was studying under the Ari Akadosh, the Ari said to him, "You have a big avera. When you were a young boy, you cursed." There's two uh, different girsah. One girsah is that he hit his mother when he was a kid. He hit him. He hit her. Another girsa is that he cursed her. The more better girsa was that he cursed her. That's the better girsa. Why? We're talking when he was a kid. So the so the Ari told her, Chaim Vital, because you did that, you think that you don't get punished under the age of thirteen, and according to the Gemara, under the age of twenty. That's only Be'olam Azeh. You don't get punished under the age of thirteen and twenty. But Be'olam Haba, when they want to put you in higher mechitza of the tzaddikim, they're even midagdek. And the mitzvot and averot that you did when you were a little kid, to that extent. So he said, for that averot that you did when you were a young kid, you cursed your mother, there is no tikkun for that. Unless you fast on a special three days that are so powerful days of the Sfrat Omer, they're called Shlosha Yemei Hagbala, which are three days before Sfrat Omer. And from this, the tzaddikim learned that these three days before Shavuot are very powerful days that you could do the highest of Tikkunim in connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So we're in these very special days and we're leading up to Shavuot. You know, Shavuot is the sign of the Gemini. The Gemini is uh, the astrology sign, is a male, twins. It's a, but it's really a male and a female. And it symbolizes the connection that Klal Yisrael has with Hashem Yidbarah. I was reading, I was reading a book that was suggested by Rabbi Victor Miller. Anybody who loves history over here has to buy this book. It's called Europe and the Jews by Malcolm Hay, a very big historian. He was a World War I soldier and he wrote a history book called Europe and the Jews, very well acclaimed. He writes over there things that if you read over there, I didn't go 50 pages in the book till I couldn't cry. The, just the tribulations, the pogroms. The, the, the blood libels throughout the generation for a thousand years, till the 1900, the Jews went through. 
And one interesting thing the Goyim, the Catholics, always used to say about the Jews, always. They used to make sermons on this, always preach this in their churches. They used to always say this, God hates you. Like this, always. God hates the Jews. You, God doesn't like you guys. You are meant to be slaves and live lives of poverty, meant to be degraded, meant to be nothing in the world. I have news for them. In the Old Testament, for them it's the Old Testament, in the Navi Ovadia, the Navi Ovadia, it says like this, he was a Ger Adomi. He was an, a Ger from Edom. And he writes like this, Et Esav Saneti. I hate you, Esav. Ve'et Yaakov Ahavti. I love Yaakov. I love Yaakov. Nothing you could do about it. In the, in the book of Isaiah, Yeshaya, it says over there, Hashem says to, to uh, Yeshaya, tell the Jews, Why do you Jews believe that I left you? Where is the get that I gave you? Did I ever give you guys a get? Did I ever give you a divorce document? Did I ever throw you out? What did I do that you think that I, that I turned my back from you? I love you. What is the proof of that love, says all the tzaddikim? The proof of that love is the holiday of Shavuot. You see, the simplest things in life, we're brainwashed by the Americans to always think, to express our love, you have to be bombastic. You have to express it with lavish gifts. You have to be, you have to express yourself in, uh, make a big deal out of it. You have to be on social media. When you, when you propose, it has to be all over the news. Everybody has to know about it. This is the Goyim way. How do we know this? When Yaakov came to placate Esav, what did he send him? 50 camels, 100 sheep, 50 like this, 80 like that. He came to, to make him... Well, when Yaakov came to see Isaac, does the Torah say he didn't see his father for 22 years? Does the Torah say what he gave to see Isaac? It's hot. It doesn't even say that he met him. It says he just got there to Hebron. That was it. That's all it says. There was no big uh, thing. When Yosef meant to, went to see Yaakov, does it say what Yaakov was doing? The Chachamim say he was saying Shema Yisrael. That's all it says. It says Yosef cried. That's all it says. There wasn't something great over there. It wasn't something big over there. It was the simple me. That's why the holiday of Shavuot doesn't have any special mitzvah. There's no special mitzvah in Shavuot. It's a Yom Tov. It's a simple Yom Tov. There's no Lulav. There's no Etrog. There is no Matzah. There is no Haggadah. There is nothing on this holiday. <coughs> Even to stay up the whole night is a Minhag. Oh, it's a Minhag. It's a Minhag that was started by Rav Yosef Karo. Not even by the Ariya Kadosh. Rav Yosef Karo stood up all night on this night in Turkey. So it wasn't even in Israel. He stood up all night. He was with, who recorded the story? The Shla Kadosh. You know, we all read the prayer for the children. The prayer of the Shla. The Shla heard this from a student of the student of Rav Yosef Karo. It wasn't even recorded. Later on, it was recorded in the Shara Kavanot. It was, but the Shara Kavanot wasn't released to the Jewish people till much later. There was a cherem. You couldn't let the words of the Ari leave Eretz Israel. So we didn't even know. It was only through the words of Yosef Kari to stay up all night tonight. But really, if you look at the Shulchan Aruch, you know what it says about tonight? All it says, it's a Ramah. That you have to eat dairy on Shavuot. There is a minhag to eat dairy. That's it. That's all this holiday is, to eat dairy, halav. That's all it is. When we got the Torah, that's the whole, that's the beauty of it. Love is simple. Love is not complicated. Love is not uh, perpetuated through lavishness, through big meanings. Love is a simple meaning. We say it every single day. The Torah teaches us something very simple over here. It says, Hashem says, tell yourself that you love me twice a day. Why twice a day? Really, how many times do we say it? At least three times a day, right? Shema in the morning, Shema in the night, Shema for Kriyat Shema Lamita. Some say it a fourth time. If they're coming late to shul, they say Shema of the Korbano. They say Shema after four times. Why do you do that? If you tell yourself something many times, eventually you're going to come to believe it. So Hashem says, really, I embedded in every single person over here a natural love for me. But some people don't know how to feel that love. I'm going to teach you a way how to express that love. 
If you keep on saying Ve'ahavta, 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 what are you going to end up doing? Ve'ahavta, you're going to end up loving him. You understand? And Hashem says, Mitoch shelo lishma, if you do something not for the sake of Hashem, balishma. Eventually you're going to do it for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So as we get into this close day of Shavuot, of this day where we truly express our love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in a way that it's, it's inex- inexplicable, I want to tell you guys an amazing chidush that I learned from Rabbi Akiva Tatz. I don't know if you ever heard of him, Rabbi Akiva Tatz. He's a psychologist and a rabbi of, in South Africa. He's a very famous rabbi. He's a doctor. He's a PhD, MD, whatever. He says something very interesting. He says, the Jews, unfortunately, in this 1,950 plus years of Galut, we've been very, very, uh, we've got very uh, influenced by the Catholics. How so? He says, for example, we say there's a word that all the Jews have all the time. It's called emuna. What is, if I ask you guys, what does emuna mean? What is the word emuna? Faith. 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 But I ask you a question, though, he says. Faith. Do, do Catholics have faith? Yes. Do Muslims have faith? Yeah. Yes. Oh, so Jews also have faith. What is faith, he says? Faith is blind. It's blind. When I say I have faith in you, what am I basic, basically saying? I can't prove what you're saying, but I believe in you. That's the total opposite of Judaism, he says. In Judaism, we don't have faith, he writes. Faith is a Catholic word. Faith is a word for goyim. Faith is not what we have. He says, emunah is faithfulness. What's faithfulness? Loyalty. And he says, I'll prove it to you. When you say, yidgadal v'yidgadash mehaba, we all say, amen. amen. You say, baruch atah Hashem, elokeinu melech olam she'akol niya bidvar, what do we say? Amen. You say, uh, gomel, amen. Berkat Torah, amen. What are you saying, basically? What is amen? Amen comes from the word, Emuna, no. What's the word? Amen. Emuna. So you're telling me what I'm basically saying? Amen. I have faith in what you're saying. I believe in what you're saying. I don't know if it's true. I just believe in it. Everything Hashem did, I believe in it. That what we're saying? That's kfira. What does the Chachamim say? When you say amen, what are you really saying? Now you can say it. Emet. 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 What is emet? It's true. What's the difference between faith and truth? <laughs> faith, I don't know if it's true or not. They say Yoshka died. He, after three days, he went up to heaven. They opened up the grave. He wasn't there. I have, they have, not me, but they, they have faith. And he's going to come back again on the F train. Whatever is going to come back again, he ha- we ha- they have faith. Faith they have. They don't know if it's true or not, but what do they have? Faith. faith. What's faith? Faith is blind. Yeah. Till today, it's, it's running late. It's New York, what are you going to do? The F is always late. So, Judaism is not like that. Judaism, we say, What are we saying? Emet. What's emet? It's true. What's the difference? I could prove it. We know it's true. We know it's true. Now, truth is not always exciting. Faith is much more exciting. Why is faith more exciting? Because it's mysterious. Is it going to happen? Or is it not going to happen? Is it going to come? Or is it not going to come? Why do people love gambling? They have faith. I'm going to win, they say. I'm going to win. That's why if you gamble, you can be a witness in a, in a wedding. A gambler is a pasul ed. It's pasul ed. Lottery in America is, is okay. Lottery in Israel, because you're gambling against Jews, is asur. You understand? Why is gambling asur? Because the guy who's playing, he has faith. He believes he's going to win. So he doesn't really want to give his money. You understand? So you're really stealing from him. Midrabanan, but... 
it's a form of stealing, not stealing, stealing. The Torah says, but it's a form of stealing because the guy who's playing, if you go to a casino, he's playing blackjack and he's winning against the place. And suddenly, he's like, he's up to $50,000. He's like, oh my God, I'm telling you, the next hand is going to go up 100000 I'm going to win. When he loses, does he, really want to, does he really think he's going to lose? He was sure 100% he was going to win. A gambler is pasuliot ed. He's on the same level as an amaretz. Guy who plays in the casino. Guy who goes to the Atlantic City. All these are psulim le'edut. Why? They, it's mysterious, but they believe. It's blind faith, but they believe. They don't really want to give their money. If they knew they were going to lose, were they going to play? No, but they have this mysterious feeling. That's why all the religions of the world, they have a lot of followers, right? Why? Because there's something mysterious at the end of the road. Do you know Dru Druzis, the, Dru the uh, Druzi people? In Israel. In Israel, the Druzi. When yeah. you, if you ask them, what do you believe in? You know what they, what they tell you? We don't know. The elders know. Before we die, when we get very old, the elders bring us into the room and tell us what we believe in. There is an element of mystery. In Judaism, there's no mystery, Hashem said. Hashem said, Shavuot. I came down in front of approximately 3 million people, including women and children, and I said in front of everybody, Anochi Hashem Elokecha velo yelecha Elohim Aherim al Panai. I told you in front of everybody, not only in front of everybody, the Midrash said a bird didn't chirp, a cow didn't moo, uh, a horse didn't neigh, a lion didn't roar, nothing moved in the world at the moment that Hashem said, Anochi Hashem Elokecha. The Zohar says, death was canceled from the world. There was no death. Death didn't exist. The Jews were supposed to live. They were on the level of the sin. They, they were on the level before the sin of Adam Arishon. Do you know what kind of level that was? It was a sublime level. It was something out of this world. If it wasn't for the Erev Rav, who made the sin, Beshesh. What's Beshesh? What's Beshesh? When the Torah says Beshesh. Between the sixth hour and the seventh hour, that was the same exact time that Adam HaRishon ate from the Etz Hadad. Wow. The sin of Adam HaRishon was the same sin of the Chet HaEgeh. Then death came back to this world. Wow. Then death came back. It was such a sublime moment. Hashem says, I'm putting it out all in front of you. I want to ask you guys, if they saw HaKadosh Baruch Hu, they saw Him, they saw the Emet, they saw the truth. How come they sin 40 days later? That's where Judy, Hashem says, I need you to have emuna. There is amen. Amen is emit. Then there is emuna. What's the difference between amen and emuna? Amen, if anybody here knows Hebrew, is a male word. It's male. It's a masculine, uh, the, the verb is masculine. Men, our minds, we work with the truth. We're soldiers. We work with what's in front of us. Waze says to go right, we go right. It says go left, but, the, but there, is a, there is a block there. It says there's a, no, but it says go right. So we're gonna go right. You understand, when a man walks into a party, he doesn't scour the room. He picks a spot and he goes straight there he, and he stops. His, this is my spot. When he walks into a shul, a guy, what is the first thing he looks for? His seat. He doesn't look around who's here, what's that. A woman is the exact opposite. When she walks into a party, she scours the whole room. She scans everything and then she makes her dive. And then when she walks into a shul, she first sees who's sitting over there. She wants, it's totally different. Right? Men are emit. They're truth. They just stick to a point. Women are emuna. What's emuna? Faithfulness. Loyalty. Loyalty. Faithfulness is loyalty. There's, when you have the truth, once the truth is established, then what do you need to take it to the next point? You need the loyalty. For example, I'll give you a mashal. A guy is standing in front of a field. A field. It's dark outside. He's in the Midwest. He's in Montana. He needs to get to the other end of the field. He does, it's dark. He doesn't know what's at the other end. He doesn't know how to get there. Suddenly there's a strike of lightning and he sees the path and it gets dark again. He knows the path. He has the emet. 
but he doesn't have the emuna, the faith to cross that path now because it's dark again. When a man gets married, Hashem says, I gave you the emet, I gave you the Torah. Now I need you to implement it. I need to give you the emuna. That emuna could only come once a person finds his wife. If she's a true Ezer Kenegdo, of course. If she trusts his emet, his emet, then he will trust her emuna. The lady of the child, the husband. When they trust each other, then he could cross the field. Then he could get to the end. So Hashem says, I gave you the Torah, but now I'm giving you 3,000 years until Mashiach comes. So you need that emuna. You need to get to the end of the road. I'm not, I showed you the way. I gave you the Torah. Now you need to get to the other side. I'll give you an example. There was a true story. I forget the name. There was a Japanese soldier, a Japanese soldier, that Japanese, when they're soldiers, these guys, you know, when they get caught, they don't get caught. They have a knife. They perform something called seppuku. Yeah, they take, uh, the, yeah, kamakai, kamakai is in the airplane. But uh, seppuku is, they have a knife, and I don't want to show it on me, the Gemara says don't do that, but they actually stab themselves to death. It's called, you understand? Know yeah, they have a small uh, knife, and they kill themselves. Why? They're so trained in their, in their uh, way, they're so faithful, right, that they just, they go till the end. So there's one guy, he was fighting against the Americans in World War II. He was trained in jungle to uh, jungle survival. Jungle survival, because in the West, in the Pacific Ocean, many islands there are jungles. So this guy was trained in jungle survival. When the Japanese, when they retreated from the Pacific Islands, they left him. They didn't know he was alive. I think for 25 years, he survived in the jungle by himself. Do you know what it is? They said there were rats the size of the size of a thing. There were there were things out of there that you would see only in a horror movie. The guy survived and he was killing innocent people. He so he thought for 25 years that he was still in a war. In his mind, he was still fighting. 20 years later, I'm actually I'm I'm, I'm I, it's really more. I don't just remember the right number. 20 about 20 years later, he meets a Japanese guy. Now, they, they, they know themselves which Asian is Asian. We can't tell the difference, but they know. He, he meets a Japanese guy in the middle of the island. He was there for a tour or something, and he tells him, what are you doing here? He said, what do you mean? We're fighting. He said, it's been like 20 years. The war is over. Halas. He said, what are you talking about? Cannot be. And they're, you know, <laughs> and now they talk. So he doesn't stop fighting. He goes back to Japan. He meets this guy and he tells him, this guy is still there. He's still alive. So they said, what can we do to get him back home? They come up with an idea. What's the reason this soldier keeps on fighting? He has emuna or he has amen. Does he have truth or does he have faith? Faithfulness. He has faith. He has the emuna part. What is he missing? The truth, the emet. What do we do to change his emet? Nobody will change him except his own, his general. The same general who told them to keep on fighting and now has to go back and tell him. It's a true story. 100% true story. They find the general. He's like 80 years old already. They tell him, go to this Pacific island, find the guy and tell him, Stop fighting. It's over. it's over. The war is over. I'm telling you guys, it's been like, it was 20 plus years. He goes to the island. He finds him. And he says to him in the general voice, he was dressed in the madim and everything with the medals. He goes, soldier, stop. And like a baby, he takes his, uh, his, battle, his, his, uh, his gun, his knife, everything, and he puts it down. He, they bring him back to Japan. He becomes a war hero. This guy had a lot of emunah. A lot of faithfulness, a lot of loyalty, but he was missing the nikudat haemet. When we come to Shavuot night, all the goyim have a lot of faith. A lot of faith they have. They have faith. This one has in Muhammad. This one says Muhammad saw Gabriel. This one say Yoshka went to the grave and came back. This one says everybody has a lot of faith. But one thing everyone's missing, emet. They're missing amen. 
They're missing the truth. They're missing the beginning point, that strike of lightning. On Shavuot night, Hashem says, I'm not giving you anything about faith. No matzah, no maror, no flowery things, no crazy avodah. I'm giving you one thing, the Torah. No sugar. No sugar. I'm just giving you that strike of lightning. And that strike of lightning has to take you till the next Shavuot. But I'm giving you a caveat. What's the caveat? If you miss it, you miss it. If you miss the emet, you miss it for a whole year. You're done. And then to gain the emet back, it's not so easy to gain the emet back. So what did the Zohar say? To not miss it, to not miss it, you have to stay up all night. All night. Because when do you need the chokhmah? When do you need it? When do you need to strike a lightning, the emet? When it's darkest. That's why we eat dairy on Shavuot. Why dairy? Dairy symbolizes light. Light. Dairy gives you that moment. What's chalav? What's chalav? When Avraham Avinu came to serve the Malachim, he gave them what? Chema'ah. He gave them dairy to eat. He gave them chalav. Chalav is lavan. Torah is lavan. It's white. Right? It was esh shechora al gabay esh levana. And over here I want to connect it for five minutes to the parasha. This week's parasha, it's Naso. The Naso, parashat Naso, we're not gonna read it this week, but we're gonna read it next week, but we're still in parashat Naso. Anybody who comes to shul Monday and Thursday, what parasha we read? Naso. Anybody here knows this week's parasha has three, I call it atomic bombs. It's, I think it's the longest parasha in the whole Torah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. What are the three major ideas this week's parasha? Number one, Nazir. Nazir. What's the first letter of Nazir? Nun. What's the next big parasha? Sota. Sota. What's a sota? A person, doesn't matter right now, that went off the derech. He was sote. What's sote? The ways told him to go right. He went, he took a little detour. He was sote. We call it in Hebrew sote. He was sote mina derech. If you take the first letter of Nazir Zenun, first letter of sota is Samech, what do you get? Nes. Miracles. This week's parasha always falls in Shavuot. Shavuot is the highest holiday of the year. We're bringing down the Keter. Keter yitenu lecha. In the middle of these two parashas, we have four sentences. What are they? Yivarechecha Hashem v'yishmerecha Yair Hashem pana v'elecha v'yichonecha Yisa Hashem pana v'elecha v'yasem lecha shalom V'salom u'ech v'tani v'arachem But the main bracha is those three sentences. We have Berkat Kohanim, Nazir, and Sota. Says the Al Sheikh when I was in Israel, I, with a fervor, you know, I said, guys, in the second day, we need to go to Tzfat. We have to go to Tzfat. In Shum Sheila, we need to go to Tzfat. Tzfat, that's where the, that's where, that's where our, I mean, everybody here, Kilat Lashem, you know, I don't like when they call the Shul the Gadai Shul. It's not the Gadai Shul, it's Lashem. There's no Gadai Shul. It's Lashem. Gadai Shul. What is this? The Shul for Gadai There's only two Gadai here. Uh, it's Lashem. You understand? The third one is in Canada right now. The Lashem. What do you mean? Lashem of Jabrush Kinte. This so when we got to the Bet Knesset Ariya Kadosh, our boy said, I don't I can't explain to you the feeling. What it was to walk in the shul that the Ariya Hakadosh David and to pray in the Bima that the Ariya Kadosh David. It's it's it was a sublime feeling. But there was one other place that I was very much connected to when I went over there. In the Beit Kvarot of Tzfat, there's a lot of people buried over there. <clears throat> but the place over there that I really went to Daven over there, I went alone over there with Rachamim. Rachamim was with me to the caver of the Al Sheikh Hakadosh. Not that many rabbis were called Hakadosh, the holy. There's Ari Hakadosh or Achaim Hakadosh. What else we call Kadosh? We don't call that many people Kadosh. And the Al Sheikh Hakadosh. The Al Sheikh legend goes 
when he was studying in Tzfat, he was the Rebbe of Chaim Vital. He got smicha from Rav Yosef Karo, Maran. He gave smicha to Rav Chaim Vital. He gave smicha to Rav Chaim Vital. And the legend goes that he told Rav Chaim Vital, teach me Sod, teach me Kabbalah. And the Shivche Ari says that the Ari told him, you don't need to learn Kabbalah because your soul already learned it in the previous Gilgul. Your job in this generation is to give drashot, to give uh, speeches about the Torah. Perushim, and from that he wrote this book called Perush Hashem, called Torat Moshe. That's how he wrote this book, Torat Moshe. He writes over there like this about the parasha has to deal with the Shavuot. He says, Ratzak, and I, I made a promise in the place of the Al Sheikh, the Bizrat Hashem I'm going to say a Perush of the Al Sheikh every Shi'ur that I give. So I want to say, I want to end with this Perush. The Al Sheikh says, Ratza Kadosh Baruch Hu Lelamed Dad et Amo Yisrael Am Kedoshot. God wanted to teach Klal Yisrael that they will see what God gave the sons of the Levim. What did He give them? Kihuna. What did He tell the Levim? You're in the Tzava. What's Tzava? You're in the army of Hashem. Now you're a Jew. You're a Israeli. What Shevet Yehuda? Let's say you see all these things. This one is a Kohen, this one is a Levi, this one is in the Tzava, this one carries the Aaron. You say, what? What am I going to do? What's my job in this world? So he says like this. Ha'im taluik tusha b'molidam. You think holiness depends on your birth? Holiness doesn't depend on your genealogical status. Velo bebechira tovahi. Holiness depends on one's choice in this world. Says the Al Sheikh, God put the Parashat Nazir specifically in Aso by the Yevarech Hashem Vishmarech Hawaii. What's the highest thing a Kohen could do? Bless. To bless Kal Yisrael. Haraya, till today, what do Kohanim do? Bless Kal Yisrael. Says Hashem, I give every single Jew a chance to be not only like a Kohen, but higher than a Kohen. Okay. And not only that, higher than a Kohen. Gadol. A Kohen Gadol could, has to be Tame to a Tumat Mitzvah. Mit Mitzvah. A Nazir cannot be Tame to anything. So he says, man or woman, it doesn't matter, even child, could rise up, says the Al Sheikh, to a status higher than Kohen Gadol. If only he does one thing, becomes a Nazir. What does the word Nazir mean? The word Nazir. To abstain from worldly pleasures. What does that mean, says the Ra'avad? The Ra'avad says, you have a plate of food. And you tell yourself, I'm hungry, I want to eat. And you fill your stomach. That last bite, the Ra'avad says, you stop yourself? That's a ta'anit. That's a fast. It's very hard, yeah. You're in, a, you're in a table and everybody's gossiping. And you tell them, or you don't tell them, excuse me, I have somewhere to go. Where? To the restroom. To go to the restroom is better than to hear Lashon Allah. That, at that moment, you're higher than a Kohen. You became a Nazir. Everybody's dressed, not bitzniut. And you tell yourself, Ani ye bitzniut. You are higher. He says, Ish o Isha. Not just women, not just men. Men or women could be a Nazir. Everybody's going to a party and it's not snood. And you tell yourself, I'm not going to go. You're going to be a laughing stock. People are going to say, why are you not going? I'm being a Nazir at this point. Not a Nazir of the Torah, but a Nazir in the sense to you, Kedo, Shim, Atak Kadosh, Veshimcha Kadosh, Ukdoshim Bechol Yom Yalelu Chasela. The whole point of the Torah is to bring the Jews to be Kadosh. I'm going to bring you a raya. The goyim, people here who learn history, I have to tell you guys this, it's, it's important. What do the Kritmach say? Hashem left the Jewish people. Why? Where are your prophets? Where are your, you guys say you have Kabbalists. Where are they? Where are your miracles? Where are these people? Okay, you had once upon a time, Ariya Kadosh. You had once upon a time, prophets, Isaiah, Zechariah. Where are you guys right now? You guys are the people of the holy. Where are you guys? Do you know why we're not holy? We don't practice the Torah. 
We practice what's comfortable for us. And Hashem says in this week's parasha, I'm giving all you guys the ability to become higher than a Kohen Gadol. Higher than the person who blesses a Jew every single day. I'm giving you the ability to be higher than any genealogical status that you could ever think of. I'm bringing you higher than a Tzava. You know what a Nazir is? Nazir, a Kohen is in Chokhmah, Sfirat HaChokhmah. A Nazir is in Sfirat Keter. Now it's true, we don't have Nazirs today. But the ability that you have to reach is the Keter. And that's what we reach every Shavuot through the learning of the Torah all night. So I'm telling you guys this before we end. Shavuot night is not a night to be missed. Don't spend it eating semichki. Don't spend it chach chach. Don't spend it gossiping. Don't spend it mi'esh la'esh, as they say. There's no mitzvah. Mi'esh la'esh, those who know what I'm talking about. And then mi'esh uh, la'esh. There's no mitzvah in that. The mitzvah of Shavuot is keter. Says the Zohar Kadosh. When you stay up all night, you fix one karet. When you stay up Shavuot night, you fix, you know how many karets? And who here doesn't have karet? Chilul Shabbat, Nida, Yom Kippur, Chametz Bapesa. Who here doesn't have karet? When you stay up all night on Shavuot, you know how many karets you're fixing? By bringing down the keter. What's the color of keter? What color is it? White. What do we eat on Shavuot? Milk, which is white. May Hashem bless us all to have a white, a clean slate with bracha, v'atzaka, yishuot, parnasato, v'ashef, v'arizeno, ay? Amen.